it's lovely to see you all here again. Thank you so much for being here. I do love you guys because <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really like custard under gunfire, isn't it? For those of you who are joining us at home, I love the fact that there are people here in church today uh, and as well as joining us at home. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you for those who have given up the time to join us at home as we share together. Um, I think we ought to say a very big thank you to Luke because he's on his own this week. Um, Kirsty and George are poorly, um, so they'll be joining us at, at home as well. But um, if Luke needs any help, I'm sure everybody will jump in, Luke. Is that all right, mate? Good. Um, it's, uh, isn't it a beautiful autumn season so far? If anybody wants any apples, we haven't had chance to pick them from the orchard, and this goes for people at home. If you want to come down and pick any apples from the orchard, um, it would be a shame for them just to fall. So if you would like apples, there are apples down there in abundance. And if you want to make um, juice, by all means do that. If you want to make cider, make sure I get some and how I get some. That's the only thing. I think that's called the vicar's prerogative, isn't it? And he shares it with his colleagues. Always. 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 Good. Well, let's come to worship God today. We're going to be looking at the second theme, second part of this theme of justice um, in John's Gospel and how it'll be preaching a little bit later. Thank you for that. Um, and we're going to begin with a hymn. So can you put the next one up for us, Luke? It's called Jesus Christ is Waiting, Waiting in the Streets. It comes from... Um, John Bell and Graham Moore from the Iona community. So you may have heard it before. And if it's new to you, I, I think the tune will be reasonably well known. And the words are wonderful. So as we enter into worship together for this next hour, enjoy this hymn. Thank you.
I'm looking as though I know what I'm talking about now. <laughs> Chapter 16, 1 to 15. Jesus said, All this I have told you, so that you will not fall away. We will put you out of the sea. People think that they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you have filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it's for your own good that I am going, going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our King and our Redeemer. Amen. Thank you for reading that so clearly, Pearl, because I think those are quite difficult words that Jesus said as he was about to leave his disciples and his friends and go to the Father. And I spent a, an hour this morning uh, having looked at lots of commentaries and read carefully about it, even read it in Greek, um, but I had a baby on my shoulder this morning and... And I was thinking, Jesus said, I have come, I'm going to send you the advocate. This is me with the baby. And I'm thinking, um, so that you will understand the world in terms of sin and judgment and righteousness. And I thought, what are you on about, Jesus? That is pretty difficult. Um, and just holding a baby on my shoulder as I meditated on it allowed the words to come into my head in a much more simple way. So I'm going to preach a quite a simple sermon um, and give you a visual aid. And the visual aid, I think, will explain it more clearly. 
Now, we're looking at the theme of justice in John's Gospel. Uh, and as you recall, it's the first of seven themes. Last week, Matthew opened up the theme of, of justice by reflecting on the verse in John's Gospel where Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat dies and falls into the ground, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And we discussed that Jesus' life and death have brought a lot of fruit. In dying, he's dealt with injustice. And Matthew spoke about a prison chaplain and a singer-songwriter, both of whom had previously served time in prison but who had returned to off their lives in ministry when they met Jesus and their lives were changed around. There's hope for any one of us. Now, because they knew that Jesus had taken the sting from death, because he had been the grain of wheat that fell into the ground and died, they could live and live righteously. After the service last week um, at the door, we often do from some good theology, somebody said pointed this out. I think it was Con from Bamwell. He said, seeds don't actually die, Howard. You know that, don't you? But they're born again. I thought, that's a nice touch, mate. Yes, the seed doesn't die. It reconstitutes itself. It's reshaped through death. And maybe that's, the, what, that's a really good way of thinking about us, that when we die in Christ, we're reshaped. Our ego is reformed. And we then become fruitful and produce a lot more. Now today, we're reading a section from Jesus' last and lengthy discussion with his disciples. In John's Gospel, and only John's Gospel, not in Matthew, Mark or Luke, he, he talks in chapters 13 to 17. It's a lot of chapters, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Five long chapters. He details Jesus' final teaching. And during those chapters, he washes his disciples' feet, tells them to be humble servants. Then he tells them that one of them will betray him. Then he underlines, but look, even if somebody betrays you and it's one of you, please keep loving each other. You don't know who it is, but you must love each other. Um, then he talks about the Holy Spirit who will come. And then he uses a famous illustration of himself as a vine in which the disciples are branches. And now he comes to John 16. He again warns the disciples that dark times are coming, that he's going, he's dying. He's really clear that he's about to die. But that he will leave them the Holy Spirit. So, now let's get technical. The word he uses for Holy Spirit is not Holy Spirit. He uses the word parakletos that's the Greek word parakletos and the word parakletos has been translated by lots of words in lots of different translations and I think why on earth all these translations come up with all these crazy crazy words um, one translation translates it as encourager or comforter or counsellor what it means is Wait for it. Parakletos is a legal advocate. It's somebody who helps you if you don't know anything about law. Uh, any lawyers here? Who, go on, who are you pointing at? Oh, right, okay. Okay, calm, right, okay. Right, mate, you know more about law than I do, I can assure you. My mum wanted me to be, to be a lawyer, but I, I decided, no, I've not become a lawyer. Um, but a legal advocate. The Holy Spirit is a legal advocate. It's a technical word, parakletos, for somebody like Con, who actually knows something about the law and is able to help us to interpret the law when we are looking like we don't know anything and we're in trouble. Can I just give you a quick, quick example um, it's a helper, somebody who helps you when you are in the poo. This week, I have really got myself in a pickle. So, a Trinity College has returned. And when Trinity College returned, we've had 100 students, uh, and I've been the first lecturer on the block, so I'm teaching them all. And 
I'm trying out the new technology because I'm teaching these people in front of me. There's a camera on me and we're, we're zooming and I've got another screen here and these students might want to ask me a question and these ones out there, the real ones, the live ones, I mean, um, uh, might want to ask me a question as well. And then, and then I've got to record the session and then I've got to put them into Zoom groups, yeah? And I've got to put these ones in the class into Zoom groups, into group groups. And I've also got to remember what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm just going, whoo, whoo, right, okay. And then, wait for it, the computer crashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I needed a Luke. Yeah. And uh, when this happened first time, I got out my mobile phone, at least my mobile phone worked, and I quickly spoke to one of my students who I knew used to be a top-end um, computer bod, that was his job, and he came zooming in, and he went, and then about five minutes later, he had me up and running again. Um, and he said, oh, it's nothing you've done wrong, Howard, it's this. I've no idea what he's talking about but he sorted me out. And then he went away, and in the afternoon, I knew he had to be somewhere else. Something else went wrong. The, this computer stopped talking to this computer. And again, I, I thought, oh my goodness, what do I do? And I phoned Sophie upstairs. Sophie is the PA. And she came running down 100 steps from her room high up in the, in, in the building. And she did the same thing, do, 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 sorted me out. Uh, and she then said, How, I think I'll stay. It's quite interesting what you're talking about. I said, are you sure? She, so she did, and I'm so glad she did because it went wonky again. And she sorted it out. I think of, of Dan, my student, and Sophie, the PA, as being real helpers. If I was allowed to, they would have got a massive Howard hug. But instead, all they do is get a little elbow bump. Hey, guys, thanks, guys. And they're getting mentioned in my sermon. But so what they did for me in terms of computers when I'm absolutely clueless at this level of what's going on, they saved my bacon and they saved the bacon of all the students that are meant to hear what I've got to say. And just like a legal advocate comes to help you when you don't know what the law is and all you know is that you've failed... That's when the Holy Spirit comes. Got it? An advocate. And the Holy Spirit, therefore, is more than a comforter. He's more than a counsellor. He's more than an encourager. By the way, I'm just going through these words again that other translations give. He's a legal advocate. He's a parakletos. And here Jesus is pronouncing that in the place of sin, righteousness, and judgment... I will send you the helper. I will send you the legal advocate. Now let's do this as an illustration. I just need a little drink. Because basically, in life, we start off with a nice clean sheet. Ish clean. That's clean by my standard. Stop laughing. Okay? That's how we start. The little baby I had on my shoulder this morning, by the way, um, her name is Maya. She is clean in so many ways. Her skin is clean. She smells clean most of the time. Um, and she's just really sweet. She's a little hot water bottle. But um, as we go through life, we do mess up our lives, don't we? Um, so, if I can just illustrate here. As we go through life, yeah, can you hold it, Matty? I'm just struggling. Um, we make a mess of our lives. Um, now, it might just be little marks because we're not very good at computers. Or it might be bigger marks because we have got pat, uh, character flaws. Um, 
It might be that we have a tendency to be deceitful or to be a bit rough, talking to myself now. Um, or maybe um, that we might be grumpy in, in a serious way. Come on, I'll look at you now. Um, or, or it might be that we um, don't keep time very well, Matt. Um, <laughs> see, that, so the, the, that, that's you, mate. That's, that's oh, oh, messy. Um, or it might be, come on, what might it be? Pain. Just pain of, of what? Pain of life. Hurt. What, what are the other things that happen that just, as we go through life, we're no longer that sweet little innocent child on the shoulder? Come on. Anxiety, yeah. Anxiety, yeah, you keep holding it. By the way, I'm using an old um, pen um, to put this horrible stuff on it. So anxiety, what else? Violence, fear. Hey, I'm going to put something else down that doesn't help. Drugs. Being selfish, not about selfishness. You worry I'm going to put it on you, aren't you, mate? All right, good. If I do, don't worry about it, mate. I've just put some on his... On his um... You see that? Yeah? That's all right, mate. Yeah. Um, you still want to help me? Yeah. Yeah, even me. Yeah. My, 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 my unpleasant humour. Yeah. You thought you were being nice to me, and I'm being nasty to you, yeah? I've known you long enough. Okay. He's got two lobs on him now. Okay. What else? Despair. Despair. Impatience. Thank you. Yeah, any more? Pearl, you're, you're pretty perfect. Do you do, have you got any sins? <laughs> She's not going to admit you. She is. Are you sure you have? Pearl, just think of one little sin that you might have done. You can't believe I'm doing this to Pearl, can you? Eating too much. Eating too much? Look at that. Oh, Pearl, you wicked woman. Right, you okay. Never, you never suffer from that. Right, okay. Right, now, look. Good, I'm glad you see the sinful now. Can I say, chill out? We're going to sort it. We're going to wash it all up, aren't we? Because what we do with our lives is we just wash them out a bit, don't we? Um, and... We, we, we say, look, we've done a bit of problem, but we'll fix it because there are plenty of books at Waterstones that say um, how to fix things, yeah? If you eat too much, Pearl, it's just easy. All you do is go to Waterstones and get a book, and it's called a diet book, right? Or, or, or what else do they do? You, you've got the self-help guide. Um, if you get stressed... Do you know what we do? All you do is get a book on Zen meditation. It's sorted, yeah? Or, or you know, you're, some of you religious people, aren't you? All you do is go to church. Easy, and at church, everybody's nice. And lovely, and no problems. And as I'm talking, we've cleaned it. Look at that. Cleaned it. All the mass has gone into the water. And the handkerchief, it's clean, yeah? No. It's not? No. Is it worse? Yeah, it works. All we do when we try and fix stuff, it's like me on a computer, Luke, with Zoom outsourcing, yeah? Is I make more of a mess, I pull the wrong lead out, and I, don't, I, I just don't know what I'm doing. I'm because I'm a spotty naughty. Thank you so much for that, Admiral. Now, can I tell you what Jesus says? I will send you my very own spirit. It's the advocate, the helper, the legal counsellor who knows all the ins and outs as to what to do. So I did my best work there by using my self-help book 
using all the sins of the world and all the messes of personality and temperament. Jesus said, look, just come to me. Let me deal with it. And fortunately, Jesus does offer us a water of life. And fortunately, Jesus actually does clean us up. Fortunately, he does it so well that he takes the sin into himself and absorbs it. And having done that, he's still clean and so are we. The advocate does this. The advocate is amazing. The advocate is the special helpful helper and counsellor. Now, theologians have wondered how he does this. How is it that Jesus Christ pays the price for sin? He takes sin into himself and justice is removed so that justice is done and sin is gone. How does he do this? Well, it's a mystery, folk. And it's one of those special things that the counsellor, the advocate, the encourager, the comforter does. Now, you think I'm finished. I haven't. Because we've made a mess of the world. And Jesus says, go, about, go back and clean it. All that self-help, all that rubbish you've left behind in your churches, all that mess, let me just sort it out. Christians, this is our job. This is the best bit of the gospel. That we are to go back and make the world a better place. Is that cool? And I love that. So, we have all these difficulties and pains and the world is full of them. Jesus says, come to me, I will be your advocate, I will be the Holy Spirit. And then, with that spirit in you, now go back into society and change it. Matty, come here, my friend. Matty, look at that poor little man. Let me just sort you. Just sort you out, mate. Just leave it there for a little bit, mate. You'll be all right. No, I didn't. It's all right, mate. It's all right. Just calm down. Just calm. See, he's worried about his sins. Yeah. And which his spots. Many. Which are many. Which are many. But the truth is that the Lord Jesus, the paraclete, actually does. You can keep it there, mate, for a little bit. Um, sorts it all out. So even the beautiful gown of the priest. Do you know why we wear these white things? It's because it's a sign of the love of Jesus. It's not that priests are any better than anyone else, but that we um, are just as a representation in, in when we are ministering, we actually therefore wear the white robes, which are a sign of Jesus Christ who is alone the one through the advocate, the paraclete, who makes all things clean and all things new. So I'm just about finished, and Matt is just about clean. And I want to remind ourselves that our job in life is to go back into the world and clean it up. Um, and as I finish now, I'm going to read John 16... 8 to 15 once more. When I go away, I will send the advocate to you. If I don't go away, the advocate will not come. When the advocate comes, he will prove to the people of the world the truth about sin, about being right with God and about judgment. He will prove to them that sin is not believing in me. He will prove to them that being right with God comes through my going to the Father and not being with you anymore. And the advocate will prove to them that judgment happened when the ruler of the world was judged.
So Jesus is telling us that through the advocate, the ruler of the world is judged. That is the prince of darkness. That is the evil one. And that however much darkness we have in us, it will be wiped away through Christ. And that we must now go back in to the world and change it as the Holy Spirit works through us. So what will that mean for us? It will mean for us, as COVID-19 either shuts us down again or opens us out more, that we will be involved in society wherever there is pain. We will be involved with people who are broken-hearted and lonely because of this COVID-19. We will be involved with caring for the elderly in our community. There are some people who are terrified to come to church. We must love them and care for them safely. We must be involved in the development of our communities here and in the villages around. And we must always point people to Jesus because it's only Jesus who's got the power to cleanse and make things clean. We're going to be involved in house groups and the house groups will one day, I hope, be in houses but they might sometimes be online. But what we will all be doing is drawing on the strength of the Holy Spirit, the advocate. It's him who knows how it's done. We don't. Jesus, through the Spirit, is our helper and our defense counselor. I'm now going to pray, but can I ask you, my dear friends, that... If what I'm saying to you is something that you want to pray about and call upon, do so in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I want you as my advocate. I want you to send your spirit to drive away those anxieties or those besetting sins or those fears. I want you to deal with them because I can't do it myself. So let us now pray. All of us, I believe, We'll need to say that prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for sending us the advocate, the defense counsel, to speak up for us when we are clueless about what to do with our lives. Lord Jesus, thank you that you do know what to do with them because you've absorbed pain and sin and darkness and confusion and loneliness. You've taken it all into yourself and you've brought cleansing and healing. So Lord Jesus, I pray in this moment that you will take away those anxieties and pains that we feel, those sins, take them into yourself and allow us, Lord, to trust you you who hold all things. Come, Holy Spirit, and cleanse your people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, my brother.
pray for the church and for our world and thank God for his infinite and unfailing love. We thank you, Lord, for our new creation technology team, Kirsty, Luke, George and Mike. We give, them, we give grateful thanks for their weekly commitment, enabling us to live stream services across Kongsbury, Bamwell and beyond. May everyone, both present and online, be open to your word, hear your call and respond to it. We continue to think of Bishop Peter as he faces this time of illness. Lord, watch over Bishop Peter and all those who love him and sustain them all with your healing love. We pray too for Bishop Ruth. Lord, fill Ruth with unboundless energy so she can deal with the extra responsibilities taken up during Bishop Peter's absence and enable her to find time for herself and for her family during these busy, busy times ahead. And we think of Sue Hoskins and pray that her day of ordination next Saturday goes well. Guide and strengthen Sue, Lord, as she starts her curacy. And thinking of our community, we pray for the schools locally as they start up again after a long break. We pray for the teaching staff as they overcome the new challenges that the pandemic has produced. And we pray especially for pupils starting school for the first time or going to new schools, which can be an anxious time anyway. May everyone feel your loving, soothing calm, Lord. We pray for understanding, tolerance and resilience for all involved. We give thanks that in this part of the world we are able to worship freely, be educated and speak our minds openly. And we pray for those people in parts of the world for whom such things are but a dream. We lift before you, Lord, all displaced people. We pray for kindness to be shown to our fellow men and women who in their endeavours to escape danger and persecution find themselves homeless and humbled. Fill us with compassion and embolden us to speak up for those who are oppressed. May we all work towards that day when all nations will come to know your kingdom of justice and of peace. And we think of ourselves. Father, you call us to be people of kindness May we never tire of extending that hand of friendship to all around us, friend, neighbour or stranger. May we also be generous in our forgiveness, for by forgiving others, we glimpse the enormity of being forgiven by you. Help us to help each other, Lord, to walk beside those who need some company and be a voice for those who cannot speak for themselves. Draw us ever closer to your cross, Lord, so that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. service so that uh, we too can feel part of Christ's body together. The words will be up on the screen. If you could put the next one up there, please. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, my sins have been washed away. Just took a little bit more work than I imagined. <laughs> but Jesus is good. <laughs> Just like that. Let's break bread. 
together because as well as the mystery of the cross and how we're doing this amazing um, experiment before us, one of the greatest experiments is of course that Jesus takes himself into your hands and into mine. And I never cease to be amazed that when we come forward to receive communion and we put out our hands like that, something so simple we can go there, Jesus takes himself into your life this week and then chooses to walk with you wherever you go, whatever you do, in the good times and the tough times, when you need your, your sleeves washed out and for those times when he glimpses with you the joy and the beauty in this world and indeed within each of you. So we pray for us. My friends, the Lord is here. The spirits are with us. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always good to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You have made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, as Mary's child. He suffered on the cross, he died to save us from our sins, and he was raised in glory from the dead. And you send your Holy Spirit, the Advocate, to bring new life into the world, and so clothe us with love from on high. And so we join with all the angels to celebrate and say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Father, on the night before Jesus died, he shared a meal with his friends. He took the gift of bread and he thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again he thanked you, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, of the new promise of God's unfailing love. So do this in remembrance of me. My friends, Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. And Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come again. So Father, as we bring this bread and this wine and remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit, that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body. Pour your Holy Spirit on all people, that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. join together with all Christians everywhere as we share the prayer that Jesus himself did. So in the power of the Spirit and in the fellowship of Jesus himself, we pray to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Share in the body of Christ. 
For though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one breath. As we share the bread with one another this morning, unfortunately you all can't be with us today. So we've got a, a song, a quieter song from um, some bands have very kindly offered to let their music be played during these live streams, so we're actually quite limited as to those that we can play. This is one of the quieter songs from Wren Collective called Simplicity. So enjoy that as we come and we break bread together. Come in simplicity, longing for purity, to worship you in spirit and truth, only you. Lord, strip it all.
Mountain. Some of us have had communion on top of this piece of the top. Our own church, as we are sharing this morning, there's a peace that comes over all that we share. Isn't that lovely? And a sign of the work of the Spirit. Not just when something we talk about or do wonderful experiments about, but actually present here with us. And I, I pray and I believe it's the presence of those who are joining us at home, whether they're watching this live or they'll watch it at some point during the week. Some hymns and some songs for this week. I'm not going to be bleak, my friends. Something a little different. I want to talk to you a minute about a gentleman called Rodriguez. Have I ever talked to you about Rodriguez before? There was a film which my son gave me called Searching for Sugar Man. And Rodriguez is from the Mexican community, ended up living up near Detroit in the car, where the car factories are, and he had a very tough life. And he was a singer-songwriter. Luke's saying, put my microphone on. Put my microphone on. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Lord, I'm alive. Rodriguez was a, a hard-working laborer and a singer-songwriter. And he used to play in the back end of bars. And what happened was his songs never got published. And he went back to doing all his laboring and, uh, and the hard life that he knew. Unbeknownst to him, one of his songs, an album of his, managed to get over to South Africa. And there he became bigger than the Beatles. But he never knew for 20 years. And then a music historian went in search of what happened to Rodriguez. And if you love one of those stories that is both about injustice and then has a happy ending, I won't spoil the ending for you in case you decide to watch this. 
it's got the most amazing ending. And it's a story of the music industry, but also far bigger than that, a story of how God's wonderful Holy Spirit, God's justice, actually work out. And all I can say is he went from playing to 20 people in the back end of a bar to quite considerably more. So it's worth a watch, called Searching for Sugar Man. And of course, Sugar Man, in case you don't know, in the Detroit underworld, is not nice stuff. I'll leave it there. Another story. Can you see in the middle, there's these two pictures. Probably all you can see is blue, can't you? We played a song some months ago about a, by a young man called Christopher um, Duffley. And Christopher Duffley was born blind and autistic because unfortunately his mum struggled with alcohol, uh, with drug addiction. And what we've, we, the song we played was Open My Heart, Lord. And that was when he was 10. He's now 18. That's him in the top picture when he was 10, being introduced by his uncle. He's now 18. And he's a worship leader in his church. And after the live stream is finished, we will actually put up, play one of the songs that he sings. And isn't that amazing? This is the power of God's justice. Not just that he will be included, but actually he will discover his gifts. And in his case, he happens to have a beautiful voice and a heart for worship leading. So when you think about all the things that hold us back, both individually and together, be inspired by such people, as Howard shared so beautifully and powerfully in the experiment that he did with us this morning. All the other songs that we've chosen for today are up on this screen. And I love the way, Rosemary, you very kindly made reference to that passage from Micah. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, our God. Isn't that a beautiful phrase? Brilliant. Next one, please, mate. So we continue these seven themes. Um, we've got one more week on the daily blog looking at justice. Um, thank you to those who are very kindly contributing to that. Thank you to everyone who's watching that um, and walking as we look at various Bible readings through this. And then next week we'll be looking at the theme of relationships and what does, how does God understand relationships. Next one, please. One last shout out for those who might want to go and see Wren Collective. If you haven't got tickets, I think there's only about 40 left. So if you want to go, that's not 40 that we've got, that's 40 in the whole place. So if you want to go, you need to book ASAP. That would have been, we would have gone Friday night, just gone. But actually it's going to be a year's time. Next one, please. Of course, staying in touch with us in the usual way if you would like to. I think we'll just have the blessing and then our friends from live stream are going to be leaving us. So next one, please, my friend. Oh, we've got I cannot tell first. Sorry, Liz. I was doing so well, wasn't I? I was trying to remember it all off pat. Our final hymn. This is one of my, happens to be one of my favourite hymns. Do you like I cannot tell? Yeah? You love it. Oh, Pearl loves it, so it must be good. So enjoy singing it behind your mask. Those of you who are singing at home, sing to your heart's content. It's one of the most beautiful and powerful hymns, um, for me anyway. Uh, so I hope you enjoy as we offer this time to God. Thank you.
wonderful hymn of hope, isn't it? Wonderful hymn of hope. Thank you for saying it so beautifully, Liz. Thank you, love. So to our blessing, and then as we bring our service to a close. I've got to get through all the verses if I cannot tell first. There we go. So we say together. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he always look kindly upon us and give us his peace. My friends, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon each of you here, all those who have joined us at home. And may he be with us and indeed with all whom we meet this day and always. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for joining us at home. I think Luke is very kindly sort of signing everybody out now. Is that right?